completed teen challenge program and she was on fire for God and I was like, ah, whatever. But she was really good looking, so I kind of listened to her. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, right, sure, you want to come over? <laughs> but, uh, but you know, she spoke into my life and I picked up my phone and she said, you got to leave people behind, David. you got to leave the past behind. It doesn't matter. And I started deleting people's numbers out of my phone at that time. And you know what? I told drug dealers, don't call me no more. I don't want no more calls. I want to leave this world behind. And, and you know, that's when I wrote this song. And I just, just listened to this song. And if you got something in your life, just kind of, this is going to be a, a, a song and a prayer to the Lord that we're going to, from this day forward, we're going to say a prayer and we're going to move on and leave some stuff behind. Because right now, it all starts with a step. Me and Jonna, before we got back together and started going to counseling, it took a step for me saying, I don't want a divorce. I'll do whatever it takes. And it was hard, but we got into extensive counseling. And then we went into this, and then we went into that. And we, we wanted to leave that all behind. So this song's called Leave Them Behind. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to look forward, quit looking in the rearview mirror. You got to burn some bridges so we can be who God wants us to be. Maybe I have, but I know this. I know that with Jesus Christ and with his love and his son, and you turn around and give him your full life, that you can make a change. And how do I know that? I'm not just saying something, making it up, because you're looking at somebody who did it. You're looking at somebody, you're, you're looking at my wife, somebody who the world counted out, somebody who said, them too? Okay, yeah, they're doing what? But let me tell you something. When God looks down at you, all he sees is the blood of Jesus over you. He don't hear what your teacher said. He don't hear what your boss said. He don't hear what your dad said. All he knows is that you are his child and he created you and he loves you. So I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what the assignments that the devil's had on your life. I don't care. I'm going to tell you something, that you are chosen by Jesus and he has a call and he has a purpose on your life. And that you can leave all that stuff behind and never look back. Do you believe that? Yes. Um, listen to me. That's why we're here. We ain't over here standing so we can do that. We're here because we know Jesus brought you here. This is how much Jesus loves you. He'll send a bunch of people in to do this just to tell you, you know what? Jesus loves you and he's heard your prayers. 
and this isn't the end. You know, sometimes we think, this is the end. It's what I do. This is my life. This is how it happens. I was that person, the, the, the norm person. This is what I do. My parents are, my dad was locked up. I'm supposed to be locked up. You know what I mean? We, this is what we do. That's not what we do. Because my father's an almighty God. And he oversees everything. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to just pray a prayer right now. And then we're going to do one last song. And then we're going to turn it over. So every head, head bowed and every eye closed. If that's you, maybe you just want to make a deeper commitment with Christ. Maybe you're on heroin. Maybe you just don't know where you're at. You want to raise your hand, and we're going to pray this together. I'm not going to call nobody up, and I'm not going to bring nobody up, but I'm going to pray a prayer that we're all going to have a deeper commitment. And that this day forward, when the devil starts to come, we're going to look back and say, I prayed that prayer, and I believe it. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now, Father God. And first and foremost, Father God, we lift you up that you're an awesome God. You're the creator. You're the hope giver. You are our anchor, Father God. Lord, and for the people that raise their hand, Father God, as they leave this park today, Lord, that nobody be the same, Lord Jesus. That we're going to leave our shame. We're going to leave our hurt. We're going to leave the past behind. That we are creatures created by you, and you love us, and we have a purpose and a plan. Every tear that they've cried, Father God, every time that they failed, Father God, that you just let them get up and start over, Father God. It's not how you start the race. It's how you're finish it, Father God. And Lord, I pray that right now, Lord, that they're going to start seeing new fruit, Father God, because when we make good decisions, good things happen. Sometimes when we make bad decisions, bad things happen, and we have to learn and move on. Father God, I pray that when we leave here today, that not one person be the same, Father God. I pray that this couple right here to my right, Father God, that you bind them stronger than ever, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you just rain on them, Lord. You bless them financially, Father God. But whatever they may do, Father God, they put their hand to it, Lord, that they just start to see fruit, Father God, in your presence. Thing. I pray for this young lady standing right here, Father God, Lord, that I don't care what life's dealt her. I don't care what people have said about her, Father God. You look at her and she's your princess, Father God, and you love her, Father God. And if it would have just been her, you would have sent your son's blood to spill, Lord. I pray you drench her with your blood, Father God. You drench her with your grace and your mercy. You drench her with your hope, Father God, and your faith that when she leaves here, Father God, that she won't ever be the same, Lord. And Lord, that she starts to get into a church and she starts to send, send people, Lord, to encamp around her, Father God. And that the heart starts to be moved, Lord. And then we run into her again, Lord. And we can't believe everything that you did. Because if we don't believe what we pray, then we're just saying a bunch of words, Father God. I know that you're a life changer, Father God. You've changed my life. And I thank you for it, Lord, right now. And nobody be the same, Lord. From all the way back to all the way here. Thank you for Tony and the church that's here, Father God. And thank you for Jordan traveling, Lord. We, we pray as his wife's pregnant back home, Father God, that you just watch over here that he gets back, Lord. And, and that, that we just hear good reports, Lord. I thank you for his heart, Lord. I pray for his ministry, Father God. I pray that you just bless Jordan, Father God. The next time we see him, he rolls up and says, Doe, you want to get on my bus? Because he's going to have a tour bus driving around, Father God. That's the kind of God I serve. Give him a jet so I can get a ride with him, Lord. Father God, I just thank you for his heart, Lord, that he comes out. He don't care if there's two or ten. He pours his heart on these tracks, Father God. He tells his story, but at the most of all, Lord, he tells your story of what you've done through him, Lord. And let us just keep it all about Jesus, Father God. And I thank you for it. Amen? Amen. Do you guys believe that?